Well, good morning. Welcome to the worship of God at First Baptist Church on this Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Uh, we're so glad you're here. Um, I was talking to the choir as they come in, as I usually do, and, and I told Jim Crawford that I was glad he lived through Sunday school another week. And he said, you don't live through it, you fight through it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's the kind of Sunday school we have around here. Uh, you, you will be challenged uh, to grow and survive. Um, anyway, we're glad you're here. Welcome to the worship of God. A few announcements from the inside of the order of worship. Um, first off, uh, Brotherhood is tomorrow night. Um, you're accustomed to looking for that last week, but because of the holiday, we moved it. So tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, we have uh, two guys from Bell Whitley coming to speak. Um, the entree, I guess, is provided. Bring a side dish for that. And then going on down, you'll notice on Wednesday, uh, we've moved back the things that we were going to do last week because of the snow. And so the church council meeting will happen at 5, and the business meeting will happen at 6.30. So it's last week's stuff uh, this coming Wednesday night is what we're going to do. Then all the way at the bottom or close to the bottom, you'll see the Super Bowl of Caring luncheon. Uh, that'll be here before you know it. Uh, and, and it's such a fun day. Uh, you bring a soup, you bring a donation for CCM, and we have uh, Baptist potluck. What could be more Baptist than that? But uh, that's uh, on February the 4th, which is Super Bowl Sunday, uh, 1230, and the sign-up sheet is on the chapel door down here. Make sure you sign up and let us know uh, that you're coming. A few other things, and then I'll be done with announcements. Offering envelopes, if you use them, they're on the radiator at the bottom of the steps out the back door back there. Um, and then hand sanitizer. You didn't think I was going to say that, did you? Hand sanitizer is around the room, uh, little green bottles of it. There's one back there by Methuselah. Uh, that's it. And then there's a couple on either side of the door over here. Um, the flu A is bad this year, so uh, hand sanitizer for you uh, as you need it. Um, which brings me to the last announcement. Uh, I think it would be wise to not stand up and shake everybody's hand during flu season. So uh, look around the people around you. Go ahead and look around. T tell them you like them. Okay. Welcome to the worship of God. We sing today one of our great hymns of praise, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, hymn number 340. Let's stand as we sing.
We praise you, our God, our creator. We who are so small and insignificant, you recognize us and you love us. Thank you. We ask you to be here with us as we remember Jesus' baptism. Jesus showed us an example, and we want to come again to the water and think about what it meant to us. Hear our prayers and our praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's read together out of our bulletin, the Litany of Invitation and Confession. God, the creator of nature's wind, fire, and water, sweeps into our presence this hour. Glory be to God, who strengthens us and blesses all people with peace. God, who calls all new worlds into being, calls for new life in us today. Glory be to God, in whose creative purpose we are framed and empowered. God, whose spirit unites all people in a common language of love, gave to all the gifts we have. Dearest God, even those of us who are baptized sometimes forget what happens in the water. We sometimes forget that the person Sisters and brothers, God meets us where we are, ever offering forgiveness and invitation. Remember your baptism today. Remember the grace you found there. Let us lift our voices in thanks and praise to God. From the waters of the deep, God creates life. A reading from the book of Genesis. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, 
the earth was without shape or form. It was dark over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. God said, let there be light, and so light appeared. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. There was evening and there was morning, the first day. Here ends the first lesson. If you would, ready your heart and your mind, your soul, to pray with me. Oh God, we pray to you this morning as your people, your church gathered in this sanctuary. We pray this morning for the world, the whole thing, all the problems and challenges that it faces, all the conflict and violence, all the challenge about global logistics and war and rumors of war and all the things that we don't even know about. God, we pray for the world that we live in and that you so love this morning. God, we also pray for our neck of the woods in the world. We pray for the United States and its leadership. We pray for Kentucky and its leadership. We pray for Middlesboro and its leadership. We pray for our church and its leadership too. God, from top to bottom, the world is a place that needs prayer so very much. And so, God, we ask you to make us prayerful people, prayerful for ourselves, for others, and in all of it for your sake. God, we ask that knowing that each Sunday morning we come here and we practice praying together at this time in our service. We practice praying that best prayer, that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. And again this week on Baptism of the Lord Sunday in January, we join our voices together and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
In the wilderness, Jesus wades into the water with John and afterwards wades into a new life of ministry in Galilee. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy even to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And about that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. While he was coming out of the water, Jesus saw the heavens splitting open and a spirit, like a dove, coming down on him. And there was a voice from heaven, You are my son, whom I dearly love. In you, I find happiness. Here ends the gospel lesson. A hymn of stewardship to remember our own baptism. Baptized in water number 449 as we join our voices. Let's pray. God, we've come to the part of our service that is a response to the reading of your scripture. Your scripture is a gift, O oh God. So are the friends around us in this room. So is this beautiful room itself that we get to pray and worship in. So are all the many things that you have blessed us with in each and every one of our lives. God, we say thank you now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we hope to give back of our time, our talents, and our treasures too. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
of your bulletin that has Like a Dove on it. The anthem we're singing today, we've been singing it for about 14 years, and you've never had the chance to sing it. So today you will. I'll turn around when it's time for you. I know you've heard it and know it probably as well as we do. Might have been the dove. Uh, it was Cordell. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee. About that time. Most people do not hesitate to say Jesus came about 
that time. Another translation of Mark says, in those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee. Most people I know believe that Jesus came in those days. But they all know that that time and those days are not this time and these days. United Church of Christ minister Mark Yours said it this way in a commentary that I read this week, that though we sometimes say otherwise, there is a part of us that thinks of the Bible as days long gone and far away and wonders if what took place in those days long gone and in that place far away really has bearing on our lives today. It is a long time ago that we're talking about, 2,000 years. It is a land far, far away, 6,000 miles, and it is a massive understatement to say, a lot has changed since then. A massive understatement. Everything has changed since then. Technology, science, art, the way we conceive of the world we live in has changed. The way we conceive of ourselves has changed. And it has changed over and over and over again. It's not like it changed once. It has changed repeatedly through history. Even the ways we understand God and the ways we understand ourselves has changed and evolved through the centuries. Just read church history. Just read about the Protestant Reformation. Man, did it change. When you look at that picture, you kind of wonder what constant there might be. What constant, aside from change as a constant, might there be? And I see story. Story is the constant. Story is the thing that hangs on and that undergirds all the rest of it. Since 60 AD, this story of Jesus wading in the water has been read in churches like ours. Since 60 AD, all the things that have changed, but that piece has stayed the same. The story persists. The story keeps being told. The story keeps teaching and calling us around the practice of baptism. Whatever else has changed, it is the story that abides and is on this baptism of the Lord Sunday what we, God's church, are sitting with in this moment. It's the story of the baptism of Jesus. Now because it's year B in the lectionary, we hear that story from Mark's gospel, the second one for the second year. And we hear it uh, from that gospel just like we'll hear most of the stories from the gospel in Mark this whole year long. Now, I've said it before from this pulpit, but it's worth restating. Mark writes like a movie director. Yeah, Mark writes like a movie director who's doing an action movie. You know, it's not one of those slow movies that you fall asleep in. It's not one of those. It's one of those movies that just goes like this. It clips along and then and then and then. Well, that's how Mark's written. Luke, Luke loves to take a really delicate bristle and paint in the details of the gospel for you. Mark, Mark is a big fan of the three-inch paintbrush, okay? Mark paints, and you know it, big, broad strokes is how Mark tells his story. Mark gets to the River Jordan very quickly. I mean, we're still in chapter 1. Mark gets there very quickly and doesn't linger very long at Jesus' baptism. That's just not Mark's style. 
But Mark stays there long enough, just long enough to point out God in this moment. And then he moves on. Scholars have long used the term evangelist for those persons that wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's evangelist with a capital E. And that's the job of an evangelist, to show up in an event, to stay just long enough to see God, point God out, and then move on. That's kind of what evangelism does. And that's what Mark does here. And as Minister Mark yours points out in that commentary I mentioned a few moments ago, it is as if Mark says Jesus' appearance out of Nazareth is an answer to an old prayer. That old prayer is from Isaiah. Isaiah 64, to be precise, and it says, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Well, there, well, there it is. There it is. Mark gives you just enough that you hear that. You hear the echo of the prophet in the background. Oh, God, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Mark's Greek can be rendered the same way. He saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove. Mark seems to be saying that something big is happening here. On its face, it's just a guy standing in some water, splashing around. It's interesting but it's just water. It's just a guy on the side of the road. In fact, the guy's kind of crazy looking. If you ran into him somewhere else, you'd cross the street to get away from him. If you saw him in the grocery store, you'd duck down the aisle before he got a glimpse of you. He's kind of crazy looking. On its face, it's just a crazy looking guy in the water, splashing around, and people go by on the road. But Mark seems to be saying it's more than that, too. After all, this is no random river. You know the river, it's the Jordan River. Well, well, the Jordan River, let's see, the, the Jordan River. Uh, oh, yeah, the Jordan River is the river that the Israelites crossed when they arrived in the Promised Land. That's the river that he's standing in right now. The Jordan River is the gateway to new life for the Israelites. Hmm. Mark seems to be saying something big is happening here, something new like before. The lectionary pairs this passage in Mark with Genesis 1, 1 through 5. Now, I'll admit that when I first read that, I thought that was an odd pairing. I almost changed it until I slowed down and listened again. Genesis 1, 1, 5 is a story of creation. And in that story... The very first thing that happens, the very first thing that happens is God hovers, broods, blows over the water of the deep. It's new life. It's creation. It's something changing. There it is again. About that time, in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee. That was then. This is now. Things are different now. So many things are different now. Or are they? Just this past week on Facebook, Chandler Johnson, church member here, posted an update about Pam, who many of you have been asking about this morning. Uh, she's on the gradual uptick, just so you know. 
uh, her mother, Pam. We've been praying for her and keeping in touch with the family. And Chandler wrote on Facebook these words, Thank you, Zach, for coming to sit with us yesterday. And thank you, Will, that'd be Will Runyon, by the way, for stopping by throughout the day. It's nice to have familiar faces around when things are rough. And a huge thank you to Donnie and Caleb. Now, I don't know them, but we're thanking them today for spending an hour in the cold getting my car unstuck from my driveway when I completely panicked. I have some amazing people in my life, and I love you all dearly. Of course, anytime anybody thanks the pastor, they're not just thanking the pastor. They're thanking the church behind the pastor, the church around the pastor. They're thanking for the cards and the calls and the questions, and there it is. Anytime somebody thanks a former minister turned chaplain, they're not just thanking the chaplain. They're thanking the church around the chaplain. I've also watched this week as the young adults have kept up with Chandler in the Facebook uh, group that I have to turn the notifications off on sometimes because it's so um, exciting uh, <laughs> and frequent. But the young adults have kept up with and asked about and prayed for and celebrated as Pam has gotten a little better. Could it be that all that from Chandler is the sound of the heavens tearing open? Two weeks ago today, we had a party here at First Baptist Church just after worship. And it wasn't just any party, but a party for Janet Matthews. That says it all right there, doesn't it? Yeah, party for Janet Matthews, who's been doing music ministry here for 60 years. That's a party. The whole front middle section of the sanctuary right here was full. Those of you, the few that sit here, uh, most Baptists sit in the back, uh, but those of you were displaced by Janet's family. You were displaced and... Janet's family, uh, well, they were all right here, or so many of them anyway, and the room was full of family. And the rest of the room, the rest of these pews out through here, well, it was full of church friends. And nobody, not one of you, let the cat out of the bag. Now, that's a miracle. I mean, I don't know about any, I don't know how it happened. See, Janet's still surprised. I don't want to speak for you, Janet, but I saw the joy and the rejoicing in your eyes that day. And I saw the joy and the rejoicing in your eyes that day, too. Could it be that that is what the sound of heaven tearing open sounds like? How about the funeral of Ronnie Jarvis? Funeral can feel like an odd place to look, but man, we had enough people in Shoemate Chapel over there to have church, didn't we, Denise? We had so many people, in fact, on a cold January evening, Denise and Roger had turned the heat off because it was about 2,000 degrees in there. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we gathered, we laughed a little, we cried a little, we thanked God for sharing Ronnie with us. And for just a little while, it was hard to tell the difference between Shoemate Chapel and the Sanctuary First Baptist Church. For just a little while, they looked strangely the same. Could it be that is what heaven tearing open sounds like and looks like. 
How about the joy of a good Bible study on Wednesday night? How about that? The way that it sews together the small stories of people in the Bible into a larger patchwork quilt that tells God's large story. Speaking of quilts, how about a quilting group organized by a quilter who was inspired by a quilter who even in her mid-90s made and donated dozens of quilts a year to shelters in this area. How about this table right down here? You see that table? How about this table that when I walked through the room earlier this week arrested my pace? I walked by and I went, oh, wow, that table looks great. How about that table and the artistry that is on it right now? Could these things, these ordinary small things, be making the sound of the heavens tearing open? Two Sundays from now, we'll gather after church in the fellowship hall for our annual Super Bowl of Caring. Now, to be clear, that's super, S-O-U-P-E-R. It's a really bad pun, Joel Gooden. Yeah, but I didn't come up with it this time. Super bowl of caring. You'll bring the soup just the way that mama made it, and you'll share that. You'll bring the chili just the way dad made his chili, and you'll share that. Peggy will bring her chili just the way KV made it, and I've already checked. The answer is still no, you can't have the recipe. So don't ask. We'll each get a plate, a few cups. We'll go around and we'll taste. We'll make lunch out of all of those soups and chilies from all of those families and all of those stories. We'll bring checks and cash and we'll put it together and we'll send it down to CCM because February is our month to stock the food pantry down there. And we'll do that that day. I don't know about you and someone somewhere out there will say, eh, it's just a Baptist potluck. But it sure sounds like a lot more than that to me. Like the sound of the heavens tearing open. And how about your own baptism. After all, that's what this day's really about. We read the story of Jesus' baptism this morning, but what about yours? When I think about coming up out of the water at Highland Christian Church at 17 years old, the hair on my arm still stands up on end. It does that because to this day, this very moment, I would still swear that there was something in it. There was something to it. To this day, I can't put it in words, but something larger than words happened in that water. When Matthew tells this story, he says that the voice from heaven said, This is my son, the beloved. Mark and Luke, they agree with one another, but they disagree with Matthew. Mark and Luke say that the voice from heaven said, You are my son, the beloved. What about your baptism. What about that moment when you said to God, I'm all in. I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't want to speak for you, but if I listen carefully to my own memory of a baptistry, not all that different from this one right back here. 
I think I hear it. It's the sound of the wind blowing over the waters of the deep in your soul. It's the sound of the heavens tearing open and the Spirit coming from above. It's the sound of God's voice saying, You are my son, my child, the beloved in whom I am well pleased. They say that blood is thicker than water. That's the old saying. But ever since that day, ever since I waded into that water at Highland Christian Church, that water that's not different than the water back here, that's not different than the water right down there either, ever since that day, I have been convinced that water in fact, is thicker than blood, my dear, dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Water is one of nature's great change agents, and it is the substance into which we wade when we decide to become disciples of Jesus Christ. As the waters of a river are the source of vitality and transformation, so the waters of baptism sustain us and change us. At this time, All are invited to come forward to the communion table and place a finger in the baptismal waters on the table here. For some, this will be a moment of remembering, remembering the day of your own baptism. For others, it will be a moment of anticipation of a day yet to come. For all, it will be a moment to ponder again our covenant, our commitment to God as God's people and as Christ's church. The only thing that I didn't print there was that we put a little bit of rubbing alcohol in the water. It is flu season. Just a little, Leanne, it's not a lot, just a little. So, as the quartet comes, Won't you also come? Remember your own baptism today. As I went down in the river to pray, study. The starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, Studying about that good old way And who shall wear the robe and crown Good Lord, show me the way Oh, brothers, 
Christmas, let's go down. Come on down, don't you want to go down? Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me. Let's go down, come on down, don't you want to go down? Oh, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the story crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, children, let's go down. Come on down, don't you want to go down? Oh, children, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Let's go down, come on down, don't you want to go down? Oh, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to Well, I don't know about you, but I feel like I've been to church today. We're getting ready to sing another hymn, the last hymn, the hymn of opportunity. You have prayed, you have pondered, you have pilgrimaged down to the river today. Consider what else you might give to God as we stand and as we sing together.
here in the church, we are baptized and filled with God's Spirit, freed and forgiven. We're welcomed with joy. Can you hear it? This is God's sign. This is how God says, you're mine. Let's take the good news and go and share it. Amen. Thank you.